Just two weeks from today, we'll get the first results of the 2020 election when the Iowans caucus. And just ahead of that critical final stretch this morning, the New York Times is out with a big announcement. For the first time in 160 years, its editorial board is endorsing two Democratic candidates for president, Senator Amy Klobuchar and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Joining me now, New York Times deputy editorial page editor Kathleen Kingsbury, who led the endorsement process. So, Katie, uh, surprising a lot of people by picking two. Break it down for us. Why Warren and Klobuchar? We really felt that Senator Warren had the clearest uh, diagnosis of what ails America today. And we believe very strongly that she would be an excellent president. But we're a little bit worried about some of the policy proposals that she has put out. We, for instance, the board has never supported Medicare for all. And we really feel that Senator Klobuchar also has a very progressive agenda ahead of her. But because of her bipartisan credentials in the Senate, she might actually get a lot of that legislation passed. So why not just endorse her? Uh, you know, it's a it's this is we come to this with a lot of humility, humility, um, you know, coming out of Trump's election in 2016, we recognize that a lot of the institutions that undergird the values that we espouse are not as strong as we'd like them to be. And we really hear in Senator Warren's message a path forward that will help us rethink those uh, those institutions. Uh, the, the board lays it out that the American people are being c confronted with three models of how to govern the country, right? Obviously, one is Donald Trump. Right. Uh, the other, uh, you call Senator Warren the radical op option. Yeah. That word has some neg very negative connotations, right. certainly among Republi many Republicans. I think even with some independents, too. And by labeling Warren a radical, does it give ammo to the other side? And frankly, hurt her potentially with moderates and disaffected Trump voters. We have a lot of concerns about some of the rhetoric that Senator Warren is using herself, actually. She's really divided the universe into us versus them, and we already have a president who's doing that on a daily basis. And one of the messages in the editorial was um, she needs to figure out how to create a, a message of unity that more Democrats and more Americans generally can hear. They call, you, you, the board, calls Senator Klobuchar a realist. Uh, she's not been doing as well in the polls, sure. however. She's not been raising the kind of money that the front runners have been running. So what would make her the ideal candidate? Because one of the things that we know for sure, and I just saw it, I was in Phoenix and Los Angeles over the weekend with progressives who are already working uh, to try to get a Democrat elected. What they care about most is electability. Anyone who tells you that they understand electability at this point in the race is just um, pretty foolish, actually. I mean, we've seen traditional polling just collapse. We don't have a strong sense of that. This field is really wide open. And also, if you look back at 2003, John Kerry was still in the single digits at this point in the race. And we believe that Senator Klobuchar has a lot of upside potential still. Do you think, though, that in some ways you're creating a problem? I'm just thinking, for example, there's a Monmouth poll that shows 46 percent of Iowa voters remain undecided and they're going to be going first, second, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there is uh, an argument to be made about making a decision. That's what yeah. everybody has to do at some point. Somebody has to make a decision and the editorial board didn't do that. So to the extent that endorsements influence people, and we can have a different discussion about that. Have you diluted the effectiveness of this? We've tried to make this the absolute most transparent endorsement process possible. We have released full transcripts of our endorsement interviews. We are putting out a podcast where people can listen to the candidates themselves. We were releasing a television episode that aired last night and is now on Hulu. And we really feel like this is the endorsement that gives the widest range of voters options. People should go and read those transcripts, listen to the podcast, and make their own decision. Well, we were all, I would say, very surprised <laughs> with uh, the dual endorsement, but people should read it, should read yes. uh, the you. editorial and understand how you got to where you got. We knew going into this that people were going to be dissatisfied, um, and we took that very seriously. But at the end of the day, the Democratic Party is facing this existential debate, and it really needs to ha be among the voters that that debate plays out. And so I'm really excited to see where people head and when they start casting ballots next couple weeks from now.
Katie Kinsbury, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for having me. We want to talk more about this. I'm bringing in Chris Liu, former senior White House aide and DNC superdelegate. Rick Tyler is a Republican strategist and co-founder of Foundry Strategies. So again, I think, Chris, we can argue about the influence of endorsements overall. People have different opinions on that. But to the extent that they can be influential on some level, at the very least, they may encourage people who weren't thinking about either of these candidates to give them another look by endorsing two candidates, does it dilute the effectiveness? You know what, look, I think the biggest boost here is going to be to Amy Klobuchar. You know, obviously we're talking about her today in a way that we wouldn't be talking about her otherwise. And I think a lot of voters who might be willing to give her a second look right now. And as you say in Iowa and all through the Democratic primary, it's a fairly fluid process right now. And I think what was important in the New York Times uh, endorsement of her was her electability, her ability to carry counties in Minnesota in 2016 or in her reelection that Hillary Clinton could not carry. But I will say this, I look at all endorsements with kind of a big um, skepticism. I was with Obama in 2008. In January 2008, the New York Times endorsed uh, Hillary Clinton over Obama. Three days later, Ted Kennedy endorsed Obama over Clinton. And I would argue in the end that that Ted Kennedy endorsement for progressives was far more important than the New York mm -hmm. Times that it, uh, endorsement. Rick, uh, it is interesting that, that he says this is a, a big thing for Amy Klobuchar. Uh, she also got another endorsement yesterday from the Quad City Times, which is a big deal before the Iowa caucuses. Um, and that's obviously four cities uh, right in that geographic area. But she made a joke before the Times endorsement came out, leading you to strongly believe she didn't think there was a snowball's chance in hell that she was going to get the New York Times endorsement. Take a listen. The staff came in, they go, we've got a news and uh, the New York Times is doing some kind of endorsement later. And I said, well, you know what? The New York Times only covers one city. The Quad Times includes four. <laughs> Rick, do you agree with Chris? Is this a bigger deal for Amy Klobuchar than it is necessarily for Elizabeth Warren? Yeah, absolutely. It's a way bigger deal for Amy Klobuchar. Um, I got to say, look, I agree with Chris. The endorsements, we can take them with a grain of salt, depending on who they are. Um, uh, but, you know, the New York Times, this, it doesn't make any ideological sense. It actually doesn't make any sense because asking people to split their vote between two candidates would not help either candidate. It would help someone like like Joe Biden. But for Amy Klobuchar, now she has bragging rights. And, you know, she's been just outside the margin of the top uh, runners here. And she's she's likely to stay in this race. And she could. And I agree with I agree with their uh, assessment that she probably has the most upside potential of, of anyone else running. So, yeah, it's a big I think it's a big deal for Amy Klobuchar. But ideologically, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren does represent what I would consider uh, a lot of radical changes, whereas Amy Klobuchar is building for Democrats, building uh, on uh, their agenda as it's been going, you know, sort of steady as she goes, as opposed to um, uh, Medicare for all, which would deny 130 million people their private insurance policies, things like that. Meantime, Joe Biden, who did not get the endorsement, has been fielding attacks from Democratic rivals. And he uh, talked about it when he sat down with South Carolina's the state editorial board. Take a listen to this. I'm just asked a rhetorical question. Bernie's the top of the ticket in North in South Carolina or um, uh, or uh, uh, Warren's the top of the ticket. How many Democrats down the line you think are going to win? So clearly we're getting closer. That's one of the milder statements that we've heard that they've been going back and forth any, any, on an, any number of issues. Are you of the camp, Chris, that the infighting hurts the Democratic Party overall? Well, look, I've been a Democrat for a long time, and I've seen this infighting happen, and uh, there was no greater infighting than in 2008 between Obama and Clinton. I think the question is, is after you settle on a nominee, whether the party can come together the way that Hillary Clinton joined hand in hand with Barack Obama and campaigned vigorously for him, or whether we remain a divided party as we were in 2016 with Obama, uh, I mean, with Clinton and Sanders. Um, I think what Biden's point is an important one, and I, it's one of the reasons why you see a lot of um, freshman Democrats uh, who are representing Trump districts coming out and supporting Biden, because I think they understand that having somebody at the top of the ticket who can help them uh, would be important. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.